Hey guys, Chris Craze here. Today we're gonna talk about franchising versus entrepreneurship. So I get a lot of questions asked sometimes, is a franchise something good to get into? And what's involved in it? Well, I could do a couple hour long video just on that, but we're gonna keep this one short and I just wanna cover some of the basics on that. So when you ask if you wanna get into being a franchisee, and what a franchisor is and how it relates to entrepreneurship. There's a couple different things here. So let's put this into perspective. So being an entrepreneur, you already know what that is. If you don't, I would suggest Googling it because I'm not gonna explain that on this video. Um, if you're at this point, you're most likely an entrepreneur because you're thinking creatively, you're thinking out of the box and you're thinking out of the nine to five. So when you own your own business or you start your own business, obviously you're gonna be starting something from the ground up. The ground up is extremely hard. I've started multiple companies from the ground up and let me be the first to tell you that branding is, I'm not gonna say a nightmare, but it's definitely inclusive. Uh, that's probably the best word to say that is inclusive. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take a lot of equity and a lot of uh, sweat and tears. And I'm telling you, it's an investment but there's people out there that love doing that and that want to go that route so that's fine i'm not going to discredit you from doing that now those of you that may still want to be an entrepreneur and have your own business but you don't want to create your own business that's where having a franchise is a lot better and being a franchisee is a lot better now you ask why let's get into the nuts and bolts on why this would apply and why you may want to go this route so being a franchisee and being part of a franchise is good because the brand is already established. Brands like McDonald's or Carl's Jr. or some of these gyms that are out there or uh, you know many different things, there's already a brand created, there's already brand equity is what it's called. So when you open up your location, people are already familiar, uh, most likely are already familiar of what your brand is, what its purpose is, what you offer, things like that. If you move to a new location and you decide that there's a lack of a Baskin Robbins in that location and you wanna open up a Baskin Robbins, then you're gonna open up a Baskin Robbins and people most likely know what that is. So when they come in there, you already have, I don't wanna say a percentage because I'll get ridiculed on that, <laughs> but 50%, let's just say, of the work is already done maybe 40% because the brand already has equity. The brand already has movement. The brand already has awareness is the key here. So when you open up your location, people already know what you do. They already know who you are. They already know about you. And in the different levels of awareness, you're already multiple levels in. So you don't have to inform the public on what your service is, what you do, how you can help them, why they need you, all the things like that. So that's probably the best part about this. Now, the second thing that we'll talk about here is the systems already in place. Being part of a franchise, you already have systems in place. Now I've worked with a bunch of franchises in my lines of business, multiple, and I can definitely say that they have their organization set, they have their rules set. There's definitely operating procedures that have already been put in place for the franchisees. You, if you own a location, are going to be a franchisee. The business is, uh, the, the, the brand, if you will, is the franchisor. So let's say something like a Sky Zone or a Baskin Robbins or a McDonald's or something like that. What they've done is they've already set the groundwork. They've already set the principles, the operating procedures, and they've already learned about what works and what doesn't. Now, getting into the, the microcosm, if you will, uh, every location is going to be a little bit different. Um, and every franchise, uh, basically franchisee and franchisor are going to operate a little bit different. Different brands are going to operate a little bit different. But when you look at the macro scale here, these brands have set operating procedures that their franchisees need to follow. And that takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. A lot of the creativity doesn't need to be there. You just simply come in, you adopt the system, you put the system into your business and you follow it. Now, there are some instances where you can get a little bit creative. However, you do need to work within the terms and the rules and regulations uh, of the franchisor. And the reason being is they already have the system. They have a brand that they need to represent. And the last thing that they want is somebody coming in, opening up a franchisee location and just going rogue and doing whatever they want. Because ultimately, if you do do that, you are bringing down the entire brand. And that's what it is, is it's a brand, it's a community 
community of people that already have locations open and these people want to succeed. Everybody in this community wants to succeed. So if you come in and you try to derail that by whatever method, thinking that you can do things on your own and you can do something that's better or whatever the case is, ultimately you're gonna get a lot of kickback and you could get shut down or you could get your license pulled. You know, the, the brand may stop representing you and they may pull back your, um, your franchisee ability and not let you do what you're able to do and that's to operate your business under the franchise and that would be the worst thing in the world so don't do that come in follow the rules just do what they set they obviously know best they're getting market data on multiple different areas and this market data shows what works and what doesn't they will sometimes operate with individual franchise locations on some new procedures that are going to be done or some changes and what that is is it's called a test market you do a test market and you change something or you implement something new they test it and they're able to come back and say does this work or does this not work if it works then they open it up to the rest of their um, their, their community and if not then they don't they stop it and they just leave it as a failed test or a test learn I don't really like talking about failed tests because it's always you live and you learn not you live and you lost anyways different video but let's stay back to this one like I said the community is there why the community helps if you run in the troubles or you run into any questions with hiring or firing or marketing or anything like that you do have a community of other franchisees that they're able to help you out they're able to help you out and give you some insight on what's worked for them, what doesn't. You do have meetings, there will be meetings, and everybody's different, every brand is different. Um, I've seen brands that hold meetings every quarter, I've seen brands that don't hold meetings at all, uh, I've seen brands that just do, uh, whether they're in-person meetings or they're Skype meetings or whatever the case is, some of them do meetings every month, they wanna check in. Um, you know, some very successful brands out there, they have systems in place and their systems are very successful. Those of you that are in the United States, uh, more importantly on the West Coast, uh, those of you that know in and out very successful burger chain, very simple. They, I believe, are family owned, so they don't really uh, franchise their locations out. Um, but they're successful. That's a good model. So when you're talking about systems and models, that's one to look at. McDonald's is another one. McDonald's is fantastic. McDonald's is probably the number one re real estate owner in the world, if I believe I'm correct on that. Um, don't quote me because that's not the purpose of this video. Again, if you're focused on that, you're focused on the wrong thing. <laughs> I like calling you out on things like that. But anyways, back to franchisees and franchise um, you know, businesses. Uh, let's go into the, the shared risk. So as with any business, there is a risk. When you come in and you wanna be a franchisee and you wanna own a franchise, there's risk involved. Now, up front, I will say that there are fees that you need to pay. You need to pay the franchise a fee to put their brand on your business. So this is kind of where it gets into the weeds here. So you are gonna be the one that gets the location. You are gonna be the one that is basically starting your own business, whether it's an LLC, whether it's a uh, incorporated business, whatever the case is, and you're the one that personally owns that. What you're doing is you're paying franchisee fees to the franchisor and those fees themselves are to allow you to put their brand on that building and to implement their system into your business. That's how this whole process works. Now, there are a lot of other fees that will come along with that to getting started, and maybe it's getting some specific equipment that's in there. Maybe it's go only going through their vendors. Uh, a lot of franchisees, they, they have vendors, uh, and franchises, they have vendors. You know, these brands have vendors that they want you to use because they trust them, they've already vetted them through a process that says these are reliable, these are go-to, these will work and they make you use their vendors I'm in my some of my businesses I'm a personal vendor for some franchises and some some big brands brands that you know now we are recommended and sometimes and depending on the business we're the ones that are required these new franchise partners are required to come to us because we have the process set, we have the material, and we make the product that is unique that goes into each one of these locations. Again here, the system and the brand, the reason this is so important when you have franchisees and franchise locations is because their brand is established, like I've already said, but more importantly, 
the key here is if you went into one of their locations in California or if you went into one of the locations in Australia or even somewhere else in the United States, are you going to get the same experience as you would from one location to another? If the answer is yes, then they're doing a good job at regulating their brand, they're doing a good job at regulating their franchisees, they're doing a good job at bringing that same brand and the same system and the same process around to these different locations. If the answer is no, well, then there might need to be some improvement or you just simply went into one that's kind of being rogue and they're doing whatever they wanna do. That's not ultimately what the experience should be. So thinking along those lines, in order to have uniformity, you need to have the same equipment, you need to have the same vendors, you need to have the same uh, whatever it is, the same system and mixture of ingredients if, it's a, it's, if it deals with food, things like that. You wanna have the same thing at the same location so the guest gets the same experience because the last thing you want is somebody to go into one or two or three locations, they get a certain experience and then they go into a fourth location somewhere else and their experience is just completely different but the brand is, is the same on the building. That creates confusion. Confusion in the marketplace is bad. Confusion in the marketplace will make somebody skip your brand and go somewhere Somebody else, somewhere else. So you just don't want to do that. That's why the systems are in place. So going back into this control, you do have to give up some control here. Um, when you do have a franchise location, you are giving up control. And some of that control is what I already talked about here. It's allowing the brand to set the rules, the operating procedures, and the franchisee to, uh, to, to just adhere to what's already been set. So the franchiser, the, the franchise brand, if you will, Again, they have their rules set, they have their system, and you just simply need to come in and conform to that. The best way to deal with this is to conform, to build relationships, and to be proactive. When you're proactive, that's great for the brand, that's great for the, the, the franchise, um, the franchisor, because they want to have these type of franchise locations that are really uh, good with relationships that are really ad they're adhering to what their operating procedures are and and what their uh, what their brand is about what their locations are trying to do things like that so that's something to keep in mind and that's kind of where the differentiator comes in between a regular entrepreneur creating your own brand and being part of a franchise um, that's you know when you're when you're an entrepreneur and you want to create something yourself go all out, go balls to the wall, you know, create your own brand, set your own policies and procedures. If your brand's big enough and it's sustainable enough and you want to scale, that's when you start looking at franchise opportunities. You know, getting these other people in here to buy into your system. Again, the business is the system. When somebody buys into your system, that's what they're doing. They're renting or buying your system from you, which includes the logo on the building and the system, the operating procedures. I've talked about this over and over on this video, but that's what they're doing. They're taking the creativity out of it. You're taking the creativity out of it, and what you're doing is you're saying, look it, I wanna be an entrepreneur, I want the freedom and I want the responsibility of running my business, but I don't wanna go all the way. And that's not a bad thing. Going all the way doesn't always necessarily mean that you're a failure or that you're not successful. Owning a franchise is successful. There's a lot of people, Keller Williams, um, there's some Sherwin Williams, there's some McDonald's. I mean, there's a lot of people out there, uh, Baskin Robbins, these are some things I mentioned here, but these, there's many other ones. But there's people that do a very good job and they own a lot of locations and they make a lot of money off this, you know? And again, the key here is not only following the procedures and the guidelines set forth, it's having good management in place as well. Having a good manager will automate the process. You can go and you can do what you need to do and you can scale and open up more locations. So a good book here, if you wanna read more into this, is going to be a book called No New Ideas. So if you wanna check that book out, it's online. I recommend it. Great book on franchising and entrepreneurship. And we'll have more videos on this later. This won't be the first one. But until then, I'm Chris Craze, and hopefully that clears up some details for you on franchising and uh, just being an entrepreneur and building a brand. Key takeaways from this is brand. Whether you're going to do it yourself, create the brand, create the logo, create the awareness, if you don't wanna do it yourself, be part of somebody else's brand and be a franchisee. I'm Chris Craze, until next time, I'm out.